All right, let's get started on this. Episode 25, question and answer. We'll roll right in. Byron Roberts, ever feel overwhelmed with the amount of work or tasks that you put on yourself to do daily? Every Ever take a day off and only do what is necessary on your homestead? Um, we do. And the truth is, some weekends we get up and I'm like, what do you want? Well, Friday night, like, what are we doing tomorrow? Um, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Well, what do you want to do? I don't give a shit, but if you don't fucking decide, I promise you we're not doing whatever that is that you're not telling me. So we'll sleep in till 10, 11. And a lot of times I'll get up early in the morning at four o'clock and at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, I'll get back in bed with her and just sleep till two. Sometimes that, that happens. Um, but a lot of times if I'm planning to sleep in, I'm, I look at the clock, it's four 30. I'm like, I'm gonna go make this video. And then I, negotiate with myself, I could just get back in bed. No, nope, let's just get some shit done. And that's, that's usually when I do uh, get stuff done on the homestead. We do go entire weekends often where we don't even leave the property. That happens, yeah. that happens a lot. So the answer is yes. Overwhelmed? Um, no, I don't, I don't think I really feel overwhelmed. I mean, we can be at a point where the bank account is literally at zero. It happens all the time. I just work. I mean, what can you do about worrying? There's like worrying ain't going to fix nothing, but make you perform less. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I find myself doing when I'm not sure what to do, I just do something that is beneficial. Right. And a lot of times that's just sit down on the sewing machine and pre sew stuff that they're going to come in, um, tomorrow morning or Monday morning or whatever and blast this stuff out. So if I sew 10, 10 batches of pre-sew things, which means the product's 90, 85, 90% done because I can just do that just repetitively. I don't have to think about it and I can look at content, watch content. I can put on a live feed video and the video, the point of the video is that I'm doing what I tell you guys to do and that's work, right? If you don't have what you want, work more. And if you tell me you don't have time, then you don't have time to be telling me you don't have time. That means you can be in a vehicle doing Uber or whatever. These local groups here, I always see these people that are like, hey, I want to make some extra money. I can drive you around. I can pick up deliveries. I can come organize your storage unit. I can come do yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Those people, those are the people that I want to deal with, right? Yep. Those are the people that I'm glad are in my community because they're not out there. And then you, have an, equal, you have an equal amount of posts being like, hey, where's the food drive? Anybody have a free couch? Um, the newest one, and if you ever type this out, I will fucking wring your neck, whoever's listening. Who has this at a reasonable price? Fuck your reasonable yeah. price, you cheap fucking beggar. Like, I don't want to deal with people that want reasonable price. I want to deal with people that, that fucking just want the thing and make it happen. We, and, and the other one on, on Facebook, especially in these groups, is uh, delete if not allowed. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> fucking grab your fucking nuts and just do what you want to fucking do. And if somebody, if it's not allowed, they'll fucking delete it. They don't need your permission nor your virtue signaling. Mm -hmm. And you are so fucking conditioned to being little fucking pussies that yep. you don't even realize you're doing it. And that is exactly how society is fucked the way it is. All those people, delete if not allowed, who has the best price? That's why your world's fucked up around you. Not, not you, probably, if you're listening. You are making steps and moves to make your world better. But you walk amongst people that are like that, and they are contagious. Be careful. Just be aware of that. So movement. And I think it's important, too, just because you're moving doesn't, like, if you need, if your bank account's low and you need to make money, just working within the business, if you're not doing something that makes money, it's not helping, right? Even though you're working, make sure you're doing things that make money right? Pick the phone up, have a conversation, interact on social. Hey, thank you for your order. Hey, did anybody get shipping today? Right? Just any number. You see me do it all the time, not even thinking about it. When I get on live feed, hey, anybody get tracking today? That's because I want, I'm, I want people excited about product coming. Mm -hmm. I want other people who are going to watch it later to see that other people have product. It's psychological and, and it's always doable. Um, and if you're really, really not sure what to do, fucking work out movement. Movement is never going to harm you. And it's usually going to clear your mind. It is going to, if you have something that's really wrong in your life or in your head at the moment, when you move, the endorphins fix that for an amount of, for a temporary amount of time, but they do fix it and they will clear your head. And it's, it just builds momentum. You just need to keep the momentum going. 
So if I look at everything that I have to do in a day, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So I don't do that. I just make a list and I'm like, okay, so these are the things that I need to do. And this is the one I don't want to do at all. So that's the one I'm going to do first. So it's done and out of the way. And I just take each one, one by one, and knock that shit off of there. And that makes it to where I'm not overwhelmed because I'm steadily making progress, right? You're, you're being productive. You're, you're taking care of the things that you need to take care of, regardless if it's the laundry or the orders or whatever the case may be. Um, that goes, uh, somebody a long time ago told me something that sticks in my head, and that's exactly what you said. It's uh, be the person that your future self will thank. Right, and, right. Like, let's say it's laundry. You want to get this laundry done. Well, if you get it done now, then later on you don't want to do it. It's already done, and you'll thank yourself for having it done. Exactly. You know? yeah, also, exactly. economy of motion, right, and utilization, proper utilization of time. So we're clearing off, I'm clearing off some shelves right now, some shelving racks, because we're bringing in a bunch more material. But I have stuff, seven years worth of shit that's just been placed there. Most of it I didn't place there. I placed something in somebody's way, and they put it there. That was kind of the catch-all. And there's a lot of those shelves that are just catch-all. Mm -hmm. And as I'm digging through these, I'm like, holy shit, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. And, I, <laughs> and I'd forgotten we even had some of this stuff, right? So I pick it up, and I kind of take it to where it needs to be. And then I pick up the handful worth of other and it goes to the garage. And I pick, so I do five miles of walking by the time I'm done when I should have just put it in bins and taken those bins where they need to go. But I'm the person that if I put those things in bins, they're going to sit there 10 years from now, I'm going to be like, Hey, this is pretty cool. When we go like <laughs> what's in this bin. Right. So I, I waste a lot of time, but in those, in doing that, it also spurs other thoughts. And when I have thoughts, I, voice to text them or I write them down. I've started keeping just composition books full of that stuff. So it, it's just, you know, velocity. How fast do you need to get that done, right? Do you need money? Do you need accomplishment? Do you, what, what do you need right then, right? So those shelves still have shit all over them when really what should happen is we should just take all of that shit on those shelves and empty that fucking thing out so that's an empty, complete shelving unit in five minutes and that task is accomplished, we don't need to worry about the shit that was on the shelf because it's been on the shelf for seven years and we didn't know it was there anyways, right? And then we'll unfuck that later. But but one thing that people don't really talk about, like that shelf, you're gonna put that cleaning that shelf off way more than if than you going to sit down at the sewing machine because you like sewing. I used to uh, stock vending machines. I hated it. I like driving, but I hated carrying all that stuff. I didn't I didn't want to go to work any any, every day, it's like I don't. I just want to get this over with. It's funny because you were just talking about buying vending yeah, machines. Well, that's different because I'll, it's yours. I'll, yeah, yeah, I get it. But, but I find myself like waking up in the middle of the night and be like, "What am I going to do? I'm wide awake. Let me just get some work done because it's something I enjoy. Just like do building gear is what you enjoy. So it's harder to get overwhelmed when you just get to do everything that you want to do. Well, Cody was saying something, and and I we weren't talking about him. We were just talking about people in general. And I said, you know, it, it's that six-hour day, right? I have four six-hour days. I'm going to allot you six hours to sleep, six hours with your family to, or, you know, whatever you need to do, and then 12 hours. That's 12 hours of work, whereas people, you know, I'm at work eight, I work eight hours. No, you don't. You're at work eight hours, mm -hmm. but you don't work. And then you have an hour getting ready and driving there and an hour back. And by the time you're done and you, you're in bed eight hours, but you're not really sleeping. People like I go to bed, but they're not asleep eight hours. They're fucking around, television, whatever it is. When you remove that, you have a lot more time for other things. And I said, you know, it looks like I'm working all the time, and I am, but that's my television time, right? I'm not watching TV. I'm just listening to content. When I'm cleaning stuff up and organizing the shop, I'm listening to content. When I'm sitting on that sewing machine for four or five hours, I'm listening to content. But at, on Monday morning, right, if I've done – a bunch of dual pistols and a bunch of smalls, every one of those is something that ships in order. So every one of those batches I touched ships in order. It's productive. And then it's, it's, it sets the tone for the next morning, right? Because no matter what they have going on, even if my cut guy, if Ethan's table's empty and he doesn't have any product there, everything I touched in those couple hours, the next in within one hour, 
10 of those ladies are going to have completed that batch and that table is going to be filled. And then I'm going to take those dual pistols or whatever in multicam black and woodland. And I'm just going to snap a photo and go, we have these. Well, there's 20 in there at 35 bucks a piece. So, you know, there's a, there's a thousand bucks mm -hmm. on 10 items. So we're going to have, you know, no matter what happens that day, we're going to have, you know, four or five grand come in off of that shit while I sat there. And then in listening to that content, I'm listening to content about whatever current events are or conspiracy theory stuff mixed in with that or uh, homesteading, right? And I put a lot of that into, I implement a lot of those things, but I also have a lot of talking points. And when you watch these big YouTube creators, like Tim Pool, um, uh, Bear, Bear's Brief, um, a lot of these guys talking about these things, they're a week late. Mm -hmm. They don't even know they're a week late. But while I'm working, I'm hearing it as it's happening, right? So I, I, we have a talking point about it. But by the time they're reporting it, it's already evolved into something completely different. But people don't know because they're literally five to ten days late on their information because that's where they get their information. Yeah. And it's because those guys are doing other things, whereas not, not that they're sitting down watching television, but while most people, that three hours that they watch TV or whatever, I'm producing... <laughs> but I'm also listening mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we're ahead on everything. Not that it's not that it really matters, but by the time Shapiro or Tim pool talk about some shit, fuck, we saw a lot of it. I've already sent it to 10 guys two weeks ago. Uh -huh. So, uh, John Witherspoon, John and Amanda, thanks for all you do for us. This to the support and comfort, pushing us to be a better person each day. As you know, I've recently fenced about three quarters of a mile to a mile around the top of my property with a dual 10 foot gate on the driveway. What do you think would be better for an automatic gate opener? Hinges that would swing the two gates open in the driveway or a solid gate that runs sideways back from the post opening to allow opening access to the driveway. Okay. What are we trying to contain? Are we trying to keep something out or keep something in? And at what level of security are we looking at? So you've seen mine. They're chain link. They're on sliders. That's what works. They're chain drive. I've got dual. I've got a Sally port built into it. That works great. Nobody has come to the door when the gates have been closed. People don't just show up unannounced. We don't come back and see people driving around the building. We've never been like, what the fuck are you doing back here? Oh, I was looking for the front door. Really? Why are you loading this metal in your truck? <laughs> right? You're going to unload that and you're going to give me your truck and you're going to walk the fuck away while you can. You can come get it when the cops fucking are here. But if you don't leave, well, you're not going to have a chance to leave. Yeah. yeah. So what, do we, what level of security, right? What you might not have seen, John, is that in between those sally ports, I have a big, huge swing out gate. And it's uh, it's three inch square tubing. It's quarter inch thick. It's six feet in the ground. It's into a enormous block of concrete. And where it locks to the other post, it's also equal, right? You're not getting a car through there. You're going to total a vehicle coming through there. We had a much lesser gate on the property, and three cars total. were completely totaled. Yeah. Like set the airbags off, crushed all the hood line. Like this dude hit this thing. And it knocked his roof line down four inches. He had to lean down to get back in, in and out of the car. He couldn't sit upright. And it removed every piece of glass from his car. Yeah. Was that the preacher? Preacher. Okay, so was that gate where the, the new swing out gate is? Mm -hmm. Yes. But it was higher. That's, the, that's what I was going to say. Uh -huh. So the new swing out is lower. So it's not going to go up over the front of your car. It's going to go right through the, the fucking front well, of it what i'm thinking about is that's pretty far off of the main road and yeah if i remember correctly he was like oh i just made a wrong turn i thought i was going yeah going down a, like it was at night so down a dark road he, that far up he had you know? he was getting his dick sucked oh, okay <laughs> he had a lbfm little brown fuck machine with him uh, and he was very lucky that she didn't bite, bite his, his penis off. off when yeah. that happened now my neighbor when we used to live at the other place, he came in here on the way back from Waverly, same situation. I can't even imagine what these dudes are doing, yeah, but he cool. hit it with a, a brand new uh, Suburban yeah. and it fucking totaled his car. It, it came up over his hood. Mm -hmm. 
creased his whole hood down, hit those A pillars, fucking caved that whole window, that whole A frame in. Yeah. Blew out the glass and deployed his airbags. So that's with a way lesser um, convenience. John, John, I would say have both if you can do it, man. Get something really big. And I wouldn't talk to a fencing company. Like we had a fencing company put this in. I would talk to a security company. Yeah, security company. I would look at some infrastructure around. Look at some big truck stops, some some big uh, industrial areas. Look at their fencing because you could do something cheaper than the fence company is going to do it that would be way more secure. Mm-hmm. Just just big steel, you know, quarter wall. It's going to be ridiculously heavy, and uh, you could you could easily and then funneling them into areas too. You don't have to have a very secure a, a super secure gate that's really big. You can use concrete and K rails and terrain features to funnel them into an area, right? Why do why do checkpoints work? Because you have HESCO barriers and stuff, right? They have to come through like a chicane. They have to move slow. It slows down momentum so they can't get build momentum to move the barriers. Um, but I, I convenience-wise, man, you are going to love something where you push a button. Amen. And the gate opens. Like, there are many nights when I got out in zero-degree temperature ice everywhere to open and close those gates. Yep. Now, our really, really secure gates, you still have to do that. But to have that fence, and that works for, it, well, it's worked for 100%. I mean, right now, you could come to our fences and, you know, hit them with a car and bust them, bust them down. They're just chain link fences. So stopping, it, it's just a deterrent, and it will stop 99% of people. And then those gate, those fences are there to keep the dogs in. The sally port's there so that we can, if we need to, we can bring semi-trucks in, close the first gate, and open the second. So if we don't have the dogs secure, there are times when we've brought vehicles in and we've brought people in, and we're like, look, we're going to come through here and open this, and then once we're in, we're going to open the next gate. Do not get out of your vehicle. Yes. Like the, these dogs, they will bite the shit out of you. Do not get out of the vehicle. And they, it works fine. It works really well for that. Um, personally, I think you need more dogs. I think you said you have one dog maybe. Way more dogs. You need, you need more dogs and you just need better dogs, right? And, and there's, there are dogs out there. There are still, like even Pyrenees dogs. The Pyrenees dogs and, and fucking Kangles now. The American Kennel Club has a goddamn classification on fucking Kangles. They're going to fuck these dogs up. But there are still real dogs that are not, those are not pets, right? There are 200-pound Pyrenees that do not look like the fucking typical Pyrenees with the, the collie-looking nose, right? That's not a Pyrenees. That's a, a man-made fucking abomination. Um, but you can get good dogs, and when you get good, you pay for them. But I mean, you get a much higher performance animal. You get a, you, it, it is just that its fucking brain is different. That's, that's what Rob and Dana have, right? Those big, huge Pyrenees. They have huge Pyrenees, they're, yeah. Their dogs are giant. And that's what uh, Frazier breeds too. He's gotcha. got very big stock um, for predator load. But when I say predator load, like what's my predator load here? I've got, I've, bobcats have shown up recently. We've got them on cameras a couple properties over. Um, per, people's dogs. They're not coming in through the fence, especially with our dogs here. They'll, I mean, they'll fucking kill them. Um, coyotes. I've got coyotes on game cameras outside the perimeter, never up on the fence line, never. Um, and then we've got mountain lions showing up. But I'm, I'm confident with the animals we have right now, um, we'd be fine with a mountain lion. Like, we, our, our animals could handle a mountain lion. Um, but I think, I think bigger dogs... And then fencing, man. And and then also, like, why are we securing the fence, John? Is it, what are we keeping in and out? Because all they got to do is walk around your fence and climb. Are we trying to keep, are we trying to deter or prevent? Because those are different things. Um, but people innately are, are lazy. That's why you catch them in traps, right? That's why you catch animals in traps. They're, they're creatures of habit, and they will follow the point of least resistance. And if you just put some barriers there or even put some traps up, I mean, that's illegal, right? You're not supposed to put traps up, but you can put perimeter alarms. And if the time ever came, you could change that alarm to something else if you had to. Everything's, everything's doable. It's no, just no, it's nobody effort has, and money. Nobody has specified what that alarm has to entail. Yeah, I mean, they've got, they've got all these shotgun alarms that shoot shells. There's no barrel to them. But, I mean, in, when times change, things change, you know. 
Those things you can get them that, that fit. fit you can buy them on things. Amazon. Yeah, like it's it's nothing. It just it's a blank shotgun shell, so it scares the shit out of people. Yeah, and even if if you can use real shotgun shells, which is yeah. illegal, <laughs> there's not there's not going to be any. There's no pressure to it because there's no barrel. Mm-hmm. It, it's not going to do any damage. Uh, well, I mean, it, you're not going to want right to get hit there. with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's not fun. going far. Um, Robert Montgomery, two stroke or four stroke. I miss my two-stroke KX250, but I'm probably too old and out of shape to handle that beast anyway. How old are you, Robert Montgomery? So I have a two. I have a brand new YZ250 here. It's probably got ten hours on it. Um, two strokes have changed. They're not what they used to be, right? They're fuel. I have fuel injected two strokes. There's fuel injected. There's electronics on these bikes now. Um, you don't even have to kick them, do you? No, these you do. The oh. the K the YZ two fifty you have to kick it. Um if I was buying a bike right now, I would get the best suspension I could buy. I would look at parts availability, right? I think I think you get the most money with KTM. KTM costs more to repair, but KTM's out there, you can get parts for it. Um how many times have you seen an EMP in your life? I mean I haven't. I own a KX, I own an X R four hundred. It's a tank. It'll fucking climb up a wall. I mean, it is a, a goat. It is a goat. It's a mountain goat, right? I've got an XR400, um, but an XR450 or something with an electric start. And my XR400 is highly modified. It has a uh, EX400 low end on it off a of four wheeler, so it actually has an electric mm-hmm. start. It's it's badass. But it's st- and I have Olin shocks like cust- I have it's, it's money. It still is not suspended like any of these newer bikes are. So into the world XR four hundred, um, I would look. I'm I'm so far removed, man. I think there's just so much good shit out there right now. Get you something with an electric start. You can put a polymer battery in there. It's tiny though. The batteries are sit right behind the the um, light shield on the front. Um, something you could probably put some panniers and stuff. My problem, I went and bought two brand new XR four hundreds years ago. And I'm like, I'm not jumping. I'm not, I'm not fucking going fast. We're just going to trail ride. And as soon as you found a little dip of dirt, you're like spinning back around and you're bram, bram, bram. And I'm fucking the bikes up. Right. So I bought one for me and a guy that worked for me. And, uh, we were jumping them, jumping them, jumping them. Before you know it, I've got a, a YZ 250, and then I've got three YZ 250s, and I've got a trailer. And a broken and we're, leg. And we're going. I didn't break any legs. Not we're going. You. We're we're jumping. Yeah, Shannon broke tib fib. <laughs> yeah, Lucky. both of them. Um, so we're we're back jumping and fucking. Now we got cameras, and we start a whole nother company, J Dub Industries, for clothing and freestyle motocross stuff. Um, I intentionally do not have bikes like that because I will. So um, side-by-sides, man. Side by, I've broken side-by-sides literally in half. I've, I've had mm-hmm. wheels on side-by-sides. The entire wheel broke into three separate pieces. I've ripped the whole front quarters off of these things. I've broke the frame. There's a front frame, rear frame, right? I've broke it literally in half. The car is in two pieces. Flipped end over end four times. I've rolled them sideways six times. And when you're done... You just keep your hands on the wheel, right? And if you're the passenger, you hold onto the handle and then you unbuckle and you get out and you figure out how you're going to put the pieces in the trailer. And, <laughs> but there's not a helicopter ride, right? So, because you're on, you got a cage. Two strokes, cool. It's less maintenance. Um, it's easier to work on. You don't have the timing chains and stuff. You know, when you do, a, when you do heads, you don't have the valves in there that you have to, that you have, well, you do have valves, but that you, you don't have all the shit that you have to fuck with, right? You just replace a piston and you hone out the cylinder. Um, two stroke. I think it's just a young guy's game, man. Like how, how old are you? How fast do you heal? What do you weigh? And what's your application? Like, are we looking like when, when you close your eyes and you dream about going riding, are you right? Who are you riding with? And what's your destination, right? How are you going to get there? Are you crossing streams or do you see yourself jumping? Like, what do you want to do with the bike? And that's, that's, that's your answer. Like, what do you want to do with the bike? Um, I had a, a KX 125. Um, it was like bright toxic green with splash pink and bright blue logos on it. I remember that. Not yours, but yeah. I remember that bike being on the Yeah, market. 1990, 89 actually was the first year. Mine was a 91. Mm-hmm. Um, I had two of them. And... 
they were chasing us around with helicopters and that thing sat for a while. So a couple of years later, my old practice bike, I just took it and painted it a uh, nutmeg. It was a, it was a primer and paint color from Walmart. I painted it nutmeg, put some gray on there. I put big shrink tubing over the forks that were anodized blue, took the swing arm all off and put big shrink tubing. So it was all desert camo. And we just go ride around. So I could still ride fast, jump. But when the helicopter came, I could just lay the bike sideways and just blend in with all the dead uh, brush. Super neat. But it's a 125, right? Once you ride a 250, it's it's a different. And, and all these bikes, like the class, I don't even know what the classes in Supercross right now are. But it used to be that you would ride a 250 four-stroke. And 125 was in that class. And then you'd ride a 450 and 250 was in that class. It just, I mean, and the hits are different, right? If you're hitting ramps and you're jumping and stuff, a lot of the two-stroke hits are second gear hits because the, the pipe comes on, right? And you can, you can tune where your power band is by your, you know, FMF fatty pipe or you have custom tune pipes, Bill's pipe or whatever. But, man, I'm so far removed from that shit. And I really need to not talk about it because I'll, I'll want to go ride that stuff. And I need to not be doing that. I really think about, oh, so my other thing, right. I bought this uh, XR650. I'm, I want to go and do some dual sport shit. And I'm looking at all these dual sport forums and adventure rider. That's a great uh, forum. And uh, over overland, overland expedition, overland. There's a, there's a huge um, forum for expedition vehicles. I don't remember what it's called. And, uh, I end up talking to this dude, he's selling a, an XR650 and it's an XR650R, right? It's not the, it's an aluminum frame, water cooled, hundred mile an hour, flat across the desert. And this bike is Baja prepped. He'd, it had just ran the Baja 500. Mm -hmm. So I buy this thing. We go meet with him. I've got extra wheels. It comes with a set of 17 inch wheels instead of 1921, for dirt, it's got supermoto wheels, all this shit. It's a kickstart. I'm probably, I don't know, 40 probably at the time. Kicking this kicks up. But man, when you when you get off camera a little bit and you're going to kick that and you're not used to kicking a bike like that, a high compression bike like that, like you'll fuck yourself up. There were there, and and the height of the bike, I'd have to tiptoe one side and mm -hmm. start it and you kind of like kick it half kick it a couple times and then push through it but if it doesn't go or you get that compression kick back and i mean it's different when you are 40 50 years old compared to when you were 20 years old because you just healed faster you still got fucked up but you're just like oh okay who cares you know when you're beyond halfway of your life you think about those things so the electric start i still have that xr650 truth is i need to sell it i need to get it i've got i'll bet there's 15, 20 motorcycles up there still. I just, I need to liquidate them. Um, get what you want, man, but be honest with yourself. You're going to end up buying something that is, if you go buy a bike, is it just going to sit there in the garage and when you're doing projects, are you going to roll it over to the other side of the garage and then eventually <laughs> send like it, set do. it in a storage unit? What happens here is I'll have all that shit. We'll clean it up, start it, put new batteries, make sure everything's running be displayed real nice and then we'll have an event here four times a year so it'll get shit i've got bikes now i think about it that 24 foot trailer right there's got six bikes in it right now we never unloaded it from the self-reliance festival from and here, june and here we are about to have another one but i have i'm very happy with all the room i have in the garage yeah it's amazing so be honest with yourself man just get me personally side by side but then you can't, you know, you can't just throw it on a hitch on the back and you can't just put it on a bike collar and you can't just put it in the back of your truck. You got to have a trailer now. And like Pierre one day was like, I'm going to buy a side by side. I'm like, Pierre, you live in an apartment, <laughs> even at his house now, uh -huh. like he's in a, in a townhome condo thing. Yeah. He couldn't keep a trailer there. And it, you, so, and you're not going to, what are you going to pull it with a Tesla? Yeah. Your 911. Yeah. Like, so now you got to, you got to have a truck. Oh, he did buy a truck, but yeah. you got to have a truck. You got to have a trailer. And where are you going to go ride? Your asshole friend, your cheap ass friend, he ain't got one. Like Pierre's friends do, my friends do. But, And it's a destination, man. You just kind of, we get a lot of these toys and we use them. It's like having a boat, right? If you're the boat guy, you go boating all the time. If you're the bass fishing guy, you go bass fishing all the time. If you're the dirt bike guy, you go dirt biking all the time. And it's camping and it's what you do. We're the working people. If, you're, if your kids are in baseball, 
you have no fucking life because you're at baseball every weekend, right? It's like that. You just decide what you want to allocate your time to. But the most people just want to buy toys and then they go do it once a week and then that shit never gets used and they've got a lot of toys, but they don't actually do anything with the toys. So just decide what you want to do.